create welfare we were handed it but welfare gave us all that we needed to say fuck that nigga and then we wonder why we have to return our children to their fathers which is the prison system because the government is your baby daddy now give us our son we fed him through food stamps we housed him through hood in section 8 we the baby daddy give us our child and we, they get to the point where they come collect and now we look and it's a pandemic and it's an epidemic of melanated men in the prison system going back to their daddy, Uncle, Uncle Sam, who raised them via food stamps and welfare and Section 8. And if we don't do something about it, we'll just continue to perpetuate the cycle. And I don't talk about what I don't know about. Cause shit, I got jammed up because after my life changed, I didn't want to let the motherfucking system go. When I didn't need it anymore. And I got fucked up behind keeping an apartment, keeping a Section 8 apartment. Thinking to myself, if I was ever to be homeless again, me and my baby's gonna always have somewhere to go. And the motherfucker reported me to welfare. Got, I got real fucked up behind that shit. I don't talk about what I don't know about, baby. I'm single mama. As you can see, I found this one on Crimson Cure. Somebody sent it to me. They said that Kendra had done this one. So, you know, I don't look at her channel as often as I used to, but this one was actually very insightful. And I will put her response to this later on in the video. But this is what I want to say. What Clark said what Monaghan said 60 years ago, almost, or more than 60 years ago, still holds. When I say black women, the euphemism, because everybody fucking said, well, did they just kick men out of the house? They made a choice. And what did Kendra said? Kendra said, they told the black men they can go kick rocks. Why? Because the Leviathan state became father. The state became stepdaddy to those kids. And the white man, in total, became her man. That's what she's telling you. And basically, even though we know we, we, we've gone over this, once that happened, guess what happened? The children became wards of the state. Once they signed their contract, once they agreed to take their welfare, once they agreed to be under the supervision of the Court of Chancery, where judges can make a decision on their children, Deb Daddy became a state. And the father's wishes, the, fa the father's, black fathers were basically no longer needed. Or the idea of the father, of the black father was no longer needed. She got her independence. She would rather that than struggle with her man. Even Mary Brown said the same thing. Hey, do you blame them? They took the better deal. And if the answer is no, I don't blame them for taking the better deal, but I want them to tell the truth about it. This young lady to have told the truth about it. She said that they could tell those Negroes to go. She said that they could give black men the middle finger. I'm independent. I don't need you. I can raise my kids by myself with the help of his stepdaddy. And what did she say? You're in the system. Guess what? The way they're raised. The state came back and claimed them. Uncle Sam came back and claimed his kids that he paid for, that he helped raise. That's why Kendra was saying, that's how come that black women were so comfortable with Nick Fuentes, because that's their man. Or he's a representation of the man, of that man. Clark said the exact same thing in his book, Dark Ghetto reiterated by Bill Hooks in her book some 15 years later. 
that have been said throughout the 70s. I pointed out that 1.2 million babies were actually sired by the man. Non-black men. It's not new. But now the truth is coming out. She said it in no uncertain terms. Can't get past that. You traded your man in for a check. You traded your man in for benefits and told him he could bounce. And then when when it did, doesn't work out, when stepdaddy says, you didn't raise these kids right, you come back and blame your man, the one that sired him, right? Or the group that sired him, right? And said, what a bad parent he is, and he's no good, and it's all his fault. Bullshit. You know what you're doing. You made the you made the deal. You made the decision, just like the oracle says. You already made the choice. We're just here to help you understand it. That's all. And stop lying about it. Sixty years later, they're still lying about it. At least I can give the divestors some kind of kudos because they have told the truth. That's what eats at black women. That's what eats at them. That's why the divestors are troubling. That's how come they can never really go in 100% on the divestors because the divestors know what's inside of them because they're, they're black women. They know there's a hankering for white men. There's that seed. Everybody knows that black women were not shipped over here wholesale to be uh, husbands for black men, for black male slaves. It wasn't happening like that. She's here to be a bed wench to massa and, and bear master's children because just back in antebellum slavery, those children belong to massa. And black women still believe and still act like those black boys belong to massa. Those black children belong to massa. Listen to what Kendra said. If the system is the baby daddies of black children, she's his woman. Okay. This is why I said in the live stream that I did about the Nick Fuentes situation. That's their man. They agree with their man. The deal was to hand the children over to the system. And this is what she said. We told the men to go. The government had given us everything that we needed to tell those dudes that they could kick rocks. And that was like 70 years ago, really. And black women have perpetuated the mindset even if she's not necessarily a welfare queen, what she has done was still perpetuate the mindset to girls that you don't need a man and sending the boys to the system. That system is still going, regardless of the fact of whether or not a lot of black women are welfare queens. I would say it's not as many as it used to be. That's generationally just on welfare, although it's quite a few. See what Kendra said? Basically, when they uh, got the approval from white daddy to do what? To, to take the check. And it grew into a tradition of the culture. The black male fathers were no longer necessary. What did they say in 1986? When they're having kids out of wedlock, a black male figure is, is, uh, is not fundamentally important. I didn't have a father. There was no father in my household. I didn't have a role male mo model in my household, so I don't think it's important. You think you can just breathe that out? You think you can just click on a switch and those cultural ideas just disappear? And people think it just goes back to welfare. It was always there. It was always there. Just wait. It's like dormant seeds waiting for fertile ground, just like wheat seeds, right? Germinated wheat seeds buried thousands of years ago in Egypt, right? They find them, they test out the seed, them, they sprinkle some water, put them in water, they start growing. It was just waiting for the proper soil and waiting for water. That's all that happened in 1961. Those seeds had been planted, had been planted 
in the 18th century, actualized in the 19th century, and lay dormant after slavery until 1961 when, during the civil rights era, they gave black women the same rights as, the, as white women had, the same welfare, the services that white women got. Guess what they did? They chose them services. They chose the the housing. They chose the food stamps. They chose the welfare. And the only stipulation that white women had to face to, you had to have a either you had to have a, a dead husband you have, or be abandoned by him. Guess what they did? I said, sorry, honey, you got to go. You're not cutting. You're not making enough money. White daddy's money is assured. My kids are going to get fed. What did she say? As long as I have Section 8 housing, my kids will have some place to stay. That's what she said. White daddy's going to keep me housed and keep me fed so that, that his children have some place to come back to. The truth hurts. My job is not to down black women. My job is not to bash them. My job is not to denigrate them. My job is to tell the truth. They made a choice. They made a choice. Fess up to the choice. Fess up to what you really did so that we can fix this instead of trying to blame the victim. When they got kicked out of the house, where'd they go? I mean, where'd they go? And <laughs> Black women talk some dumb stuff, man, sometimes. They really do. Anyhow, that's all I got for this one, man. I just had to show that one, man, because that's this vindicates what we've been talking about for eons, okay? At some point, they have to admit it. At some point, black women had to fess up and actually tell what they did. This is the point where they know the game is up. The white daddy's got to turn them loose and they, got, they have to, just like apartheid, truth and reconciliation. They got to come back and admit the truth. They got to fess up. They can't keep pointing fingers because the old contract is up. It's a new day. Hopefully it's not too late. Anyhow, with that, I'm out of here. Peace.